In my airplane, the primary flight display, or PFD, can be configured to display information in different ways. Shown here is how I most often set it. This is an electronic simulation of the standard six-pack instrument display. But you can also alter the display to show moving tapes with the same data. A lot of folks prefer this arrangement. One reason they might like it better is that there's ample space to also show insets like these. In today's video, we will fly the airport traffic pattern with each setup to see which performs better. In the traffic pattern, things are in constant motion, so it's a good place to show each PFD and its presentation in action. Today, you will not see outside the plane. Only the PFD screen will be shown. So it's up to you to visualize where in the traffic pattern the plane is. But that's the whole point of the video. Which presentation do you think makes it easier to do that? A couple of quick photos before we start the show. This is Bella, our airport dog. She's about 14 years old, but still as spry as when she was a puppy. She greets everybody that comes in. This Saratoga landed shortly before I took off. And today I shared the traffic pattern with this Robinson R-44 helicopter. I flew the standard left-hand pattern while they flew on the right side. And here we have a Piper Seminole taking off. So here we go. First we'll configure the screen to show the tapes format. In this flight we will be departing runway 16. We'll fly left hand pattern and the pattern altitude is 2,500 feet. So here we go. The runway environment the center line, the runway number, the terrain that you see around are all synthetically produced by the Garmin G3X Touch. You'll also see that the helicopter is flying their equivalent of a touch and go. So the diamond that you see periodically in the sky represents the position of the helicopter. So here's a pop quiz for you. Can you tell me right now what my rate of climb is? It's on there, but man, is it hard for me to see. We hit a thermal pushing us a little bit high there. We got to get it back down to where it belongs.
The inverse of runway 16 is 34, but we're flying the downwind with a right crab angle to account for that crosswind that we have coming from the right. You don't hear it, but the helicopter and I are communicating. And flaps are coming down now in preparation for turning base and doing our final. It's a little bit windy today, so because of the crosswind, we'll keep the left wing low and land left wheel first. Now, same day, same conditions, we'll shoot the pattern using the six-pack configuration. Okay, another pop quiz. Now, what's my rate of climb showing? In my opinion, so much easier to see. I know that at 2,500 feet, the needle should be pointing straight down. And the rate of climb indicator, if the needle is not horizontal, as it goes up or as it goes down, it gives me early warning that I am deviating from my desired altitude.
You can probably tell from the reflections of the clouds on the screen there that it's a bumpy day. Flaps down and let's turn base in preparation for landing. I think I flew better with the six-pack display. For me, the smaller presentation of speed and altitude using tapes is problematic. I can scan the panel quicker when I can see big needles, not only what they point to, but the general direction they point. VY airspeed is roughly at 4 o'clock. Altitude in thousands is 12 o'clock, while altitudes 500 is at 6 o'clock. I don't watch the vertical speed too much, but I can quickly detect a large movement of the needle that requires me to take some action. What do you think? Are tapes the more modern way to display? Is there a case where you think one is better than the other? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts. And if you haven't yet subscribed, this week we offer a free subscription, so click that subscribe button to follow this channel for more insightful talks about aviation in the Vans RV12.